Hello, and welcome to episode number two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're on a roll of uh, book drops. Um, I am Don. I am the manager of the literature department here at CPL and also the coordinator for the Ohio Center for the Book. And I'm Sarah. I also work downtown. I am the manager of the Popular Library. And we wanted to start out there with just a couple quick reminders for you. Our Summer Lit League is in full swing. Uh, it has something for everybody. Children of all ages is the tagline. So we have um, something for everybody. So check that out on the uh, CPL.org website. We also wanted to mention, since this is a show, are we calling it a show yet? Yeah, After episodes? Sure. Okay. Well, um, the, uh, we want to mention two databases that we have access to at CPL.org. We have Novelist Plus and Novelist K through 8 Plus. You can go on there and you can get those on our research databases on our website, again, at CPL.org, and you can get recommendations for reading and for books that you like, get some similar titles, that sort of thing. So if you're interested in things to read and looking for ideas, those are two databases you want to take a look at. And you're always welcome to go to Ask uh, CPL. Uh, from any page at our website, and uh, you can log on there and ask questions about books and questions and anything you want to know. So we have those resources for you as well. And today's topic is audiobooks. <laughs> <laughs> so what we wanted to do today was just start out uh, real briefly, give you some idea of the, the history of audiobooks, where they came from, but also to give a defense of audiobooks. The thing that I can't believe is that there is still a stigma attached to listening to books instead of reading them. Um, there was a, uh, an editorial in The Spectator just January of this year, and the title was, uh, was In Defense of Audiobooks, and it had the line, to the old school bibliophile, audiobooks are the literary equivalent of pre-chewed steak which I do not agree with at no, all. What no. about you, Sarah? <laughs> no, don't agree. I cannot believe there's still a stigma attached to listening to books. Um, it's a legitimate way to read. It is a legitimate way to be entertained, a legitimate way to get information. So we are putting that out there right at the beginning. <laughs> so just to very briefly, audiobooks have a nice long heritage. Uh, think of the oldest stories that we know, the Epic of Gilgamesh, the Iliad, the Odyssey. All of those started as oral traditions being told around a fire, people standing up, people listening with an audience. And I think that we lose track of that idea of the oral tradition where our stories come from. But the other thing more recently is that um, they aren't new even in modern times either. They have, uh, they started in the night, they were actually wax cylinders. I just found out before we started today, they were actually wax cylinders, like eight minutes long that people could listen to things. And but they were, they complained that they would need a wheelbarrow to listen to a book was the, the thing that I saw. But more recently, um, audiobooks first emerged in 1932 with the establishment of the recording stu studio at the American Foundation for the Blind. And this was uh, using records vinyl records for those of you who haven't seen there's like it's like a large cd for those of you who haven't seen them um but this was also the beginning of the talking books program that's still handled by the ohio library for the blind and physically disabled based right here at cleveland public library and as a an affiliate of the library of congress and so they start off with cassette tapes in the 60s compact discs in the 80s now they have digital downloads but there is a long tradition of audiobooks out there and some statistics, to give you an idea how big of an industry this is, um, some statistics from June of 2020, we had eight straight years of double digit revenue growth. Listeners age 18 and up, the average, uh, the average number of audiobooks that they listened to increased to 8.1 in 2020 and up from 6.8 the previous year. The most popular genres are mysteries, thrillers, and suspense. And I think we'll have something to say about that as yeah, well. Yeah. 57% uh, of frequent audiobook listeners are under the age of 45, and that's up 51% from 2019. And audiobook publishers, there were over 60,000 new titles produced in 2019, and that's an 18% increase from the previous year, too. So it's a huge industry. There's a lot of people listening. There is nothing wrong with it at all. And we are here to give you some recommendations and sprinkle some uh, picks through uh, our uh, session today. And we just got a comment. Andrea said it's perfect for summer road trips. Exactly. Is 
really true. Exactly. We were just talking about the last time. When's the last time you brought um, CDs CD on a trip? Physical. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. And it was on a road trip. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Um, so I definitely we when we first talked about this topic, I said we need to talk about audiobook voice casts because I had just listened to a really good one and read about some other ones and was just blown away by this book, which is Daisy Jones and the Six uh, by Taylor Jenkins Reid. It is um, read by a cast of actors. Um, Jennifer Beals is one of the main characters in Benjamin Bratt. And it is about a fictional band from the 70s, kind of think of like Fleetwood Mac or like Allman Brothers or something like that. And everything they go through and the writing process and there's breakups and hookups and it's just, you just really get into the era and all of the characters and the voice, the voices are just really bring you into it. And it's really clear, you're saying books with like 50 characters, right. it's really clear who's talking. They don't want to say every oh, single yeah. time who it is. So uh, this was a really good one and really got me thinking about the voice cast. And then we looked into it more and there's definitely a lot of other ones. So I have a few more, um, a series of unfortunate events book by Lemony Snicket, um, which is also a series on Netflix. And um, there's one with Tim Curry and then a whole voice cast. So I hadn't heard of this. So I, that, I'm putting that on my list. I read them and they're, they're mm -hmm. short little books, but I think that one is, I need to go uh, out. Tim Curry is the, is the voice cast. That, that would be an interesting, uh, yeah. Definitely. Um, another one I listened to recently is The Guest List by Lucy Foley. And this is read by a voice cast, but they're not like famous. Um, but really, I really enjoyed it. It is set, it is an Irish wedding. It's on this remote island and it's kind of this, you know, destination wedding and kind of these, you know, rich people start showing up and it's supposed to be this perfect wedding. Well, things start kind of falling apart. So you hear from each point of view, like as things are going downhill <laughs> over the weekend, what's going on with each person. So I really like that. Um, also another um, children's book, The Golden Compass, which has a few adaptations um, by Philip Pullman. And there's one that's done by London stage actors, which I hadn't heard of before. So I think that would be a good one to check out. Cool. Also the number one ladies detective agency by Alexander McCall Smith. They have a BBC full cast dramatization of that, which I think when I listened to it, it was just one narrator. So there may be different versions. So that's very I, cool. Yeah. It, it also brings up as, as you're talking to it brings up the idea of the whole idea of voice acting too. Because I think that there's sort of almost a, a stigma too. It's like if somebody says they're a voice actor, it's like, oh, well, you're not a real actor. You're a voice, voice actor. actor right. like, and, and these kinds of things show how important it is to get across characterization emotions. and all emotion, all that kind of thing. So I think the fact that you you have actors like Jennifer Bills and Tim Curry and, and these kind of people, London stage actors, they're, they're doing audio books now. So well, I feel like it's trickled down a little from maybe like Pixar. Now there's like Pixar films right. with like big stars. So it's not as much of a, you know, exactly. Like exactly. You can be a, a big actor and still do voice acting yeah. now. So but see, you but see you, that, but you, you're still, you, you can do voice acting too. You can do that on oh, the side. Right, right. It's not really <laughs> acting. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Your point is well taken. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yep. That's a good point. And along these same lines, because we've been talking about fiction. Um, Along these same lines, the um, new book, The Bomber Mafia by Malcolm Gladwell, sort of takes this into the realm of nonfiction uh, because the, uh, the book, The Bomber Mafia, was uh, based on a few of his uh, episodes of the podcast uh, Revisionist History, which if you haven't to listened to, I highly recommend that, that as well. Um, so Malcolm Gladwell explored this topic in his uh, podcast, but then really expands on it with the with the book. But what's interesting about this is that it's nonfiction, but they include interviews with actual people. So there's there's a, it's not just a somebody reading the interview with the person. It's actual excerpts from either oral histories or interviews he did. Um, there is music. There are sound effects. So whenever the planes are flying, you sort of hear the plane in the background, sort of thing. It's a whole production. So I think it's really interesting that they're taking the idea of the London stage actors and the, the fiction and the things that you think of are as you know, characters and different voices, that kind of thing, 
that comes through in the Bomber Mafia, which is just a fascinating book looking at the rise of aviation in the military and the use of strategic bombing and talking about the, the firebombing of Tokyo. If you didn't know about that, you'll hit one about that as well. But it's a fascinating book and it's really entertaining. And um, although I'm talking about firebombing and entertaining, I'm not sure whether that's, you know, I think you get the idea. So it's, it's, a, it's, it's a well done production and the whole idea, it expands, I think, the definition of what an audiobook can be. Nice. Um, and also, we were talking about how audiobooks, they can be really expensive if you um, have a subscription service or something like that, and you listen to a lot of them or you're purchasing them separately. It's just so expensive. So that is where we come in. Mm -hmm. You can definitely check out the ones on CD like this. We also have Libby and Hoopla. And I had just pulled up mine on here. So I do a lot of my audiobook listening on Libby. So you just download it straight to your phone and so listen to it on there. It's really great. I yep. listen to it on the go. And Hoopla is the same way. You just download the app, you connect with your library card, and it is a seamless. I literally was curious about a book. I checked it out, looked at what I needed to look at, and checked it back in within like you know 30 seconds without moving from my desk. So it was like, it was, that was quite convenient. Um, and then also, if this is your first time you know, downloading an audiobook, you can also call us at the library and we'd be happy to have someone walk you through it too. Um, we also and, found- And one of the nice yeah. things, I'm, I'm sorry, didn't yeah. interrupt. Um, one of the nice things, if you do look things up in our catalog, if you go to the CPL.org website, look in the catalog, you can actually download things uh, straight from the catalog as well to give you a little download link. So if you have that app installed on your phone, it will download it and then you can listen to it on your phone right there and you don't even have to look anywhere else to, to find it too. So. Good point. Uh, there's also, looking around, there's the Audible Audio Narrator Hall of Fame. So it's really interesting. Um, you can look through and see, maybe you listen to something and you really love the narrator, you can go and see the 200 other books that they read. So I thought that was really neat. And Audible is the, the ebook uh, purveyor, let's Equivalent say. Equivalent of, yeah. Yeah, so, so, you can, so you can use their Hall of Fame, get some good names, and then come to us and search our catalog. <laughs> We won't tell Audible. <laughs> and there's also, um, if you're looking for, you know, if, you, if you're new to audiobooks and you're looking for a, um, a new author or just a, something that you think might have be, be a, a good audiobook, there's also a, an award from the Audio Publishers Association, which are the Audio Awards. And they are, if you go to audiopub.org, they have a list of uh, winners there. And I think that it's um, interesting. There are numerous categories. I cannot believe when I started scrolling through it. There, there's, you know, there, there's humor and nonfiction and every genre you can think of. There's, there's a, a narration by the author. So if you're looking for for an award winner, the, the narrator themselves won an award. That's a category as well. So I think that it's just a fascinating look at what is what the industry is doing as well. Because on on the page. There, there are 27 results. If you're looking for people who either wrote and narrated their book, who both wrote and narrated, there's 27 books just on the winner's list from one year. So I, that's a, an interesting way to sort of uh, look for that kind of stuff as well. So the, the Audi Awards, the A-U-D-I-E Awards, um, check them out and if you're looking for some award-winning ones as well. That's nice. I need to go look at that. Um, so we kind of want to talk about our preferences for audiobooks, and we each have our own. Um, I am really a thriller and fantasy audiobook listener. I just, um, I'm kind of a little bit of a wimp, so <laughs> reading thrillers like At Home in the Dark doesn't work for me, so having it, um, you know, while I'm walking around at lunchtime or something, that the safety works. of your car. Definitely. Okay. No one is, is popping up behind me to <laughs> slash my throat. So. Of course, of course, if you're driving your car, just make sure there's no one in the back seat. Good point. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Don. You ruined it <laughs> my job is done. Thank you very much. So um, I love thrillers and also fantasy books. Like uh, some fantasy books can be a little bit daunting and there's a lot going on or they're you know, lots of pages or lots, it's a whole series that you're maybe not sure if you want to get through, you can kind of chip away at it on audio and it makes it a little more doable. Um, 
also we're talking about um, you can, when you download them to your phone, you can speed up the narration. So this is totally a personal choice and people have very strong opinions on this. So I usually do like a 1.25 to a 1.5. It depends how slow, sometimes there's very slow narrators who like to drag everything out. You can go to 1.5 easily. Two is a little much for me. And then some authors, if they're really reading at a pretty good clip, I can do like 1.2 or... Shall I demonstrate? Sure, sure. Uh, so we have, so here is, <laughs> so here is Malcolm Gladwell played at one and a half speed. Let's see here. Find an air base controlled by the Allies within a thousand miles of Tokyo. That's pretty fast. Australia is more than 4,000 miles from Japan. Out of the question for a B-17. Hawaii is just as far. So, so that's not too bad. So that's, so that's, so that's one and a half times. The actual playback speed, if you do it at one, that means that you're, you're, uh, you're doing it at the, uh, the speed that it was recorded. So this is what that sounds like. But the Philippines, the greater the sacrifice you make in the service of that conviction, the more resistance you will be to evidence. It's will probably go somewhere in between. Exactly. Those two. Yeah. Exactly. So you can really rip through a book if you, if you really want to. So. And I'm a big romance reader, but I, not a romance reader on audio, which we'll talk about <laughs> a little bit later. I have strong opinions, which I've shared with Don on this. Um, and I concur with you about those opinions <laughs> now too. You've done your own research. I've done, yes, I have. <laughs> so, what do you? Um, um, I, in all honesty, I usually try non. I usually think listen to nonfiction rather than fiction. Um, and I think most of that is because trying to keep track of all the characters in some of the books that I, I, I usually read, it's hard to keep track of all the cast of characters. Up. However, having listened to you talk about the different casts, I think that that is a way that I can sort of try that again and get back into it. I think that's a, that's a really good um, a selling point for that. Yeah. Because yeah. that way you don't have to keep track of like, okay, well, they're, okay, they're trying to do anything. So, yeah, but that that's that's great. So I think that's, I will also try and listen sometimes in 1.1, 1.5, just to sort of speed things along. And it really does depend on the, the narrator themselves. If they're very plodding and then enunciate all of their this. words, <laughs> then you can crank that sucker up and get all the way up to one and a half I to two. It. So, yep, yep, exactly. So we do have some different thoughts on some uh, some different genres of audiobooks as well. So uh, I think you have a few. Um, yeah, so I um, had a few thoughts. There are some really short audiobooks um, or novellas. They're about three to five hours, so really you can knock these out pretty quick. Uh, one, I just did the first and second book of this. It's Every Heart a Doorway by Seanan McGuire. And it's about children who get swept away to magical realms and they kind of age out of it and they get kicked back to our world <laughs> and they're teenagers and they're lost and don't know how to function and the parents don't know how to deal with them so they go to the school where they're kind of all lumped together because they've all but all the worlds they've gone to are different and they're all having different ways of coping with it and they're all kind of trying to get back to those worlds because it's where they grew up and felt most comfortable it's really interesting premise and then there's ones after this and they focus on the different kids at the school so really quick, um, oh, I think this cool. was about four hours. Oh, that's perfect because you, you talk about four hours there and then we'll talk about <laughs> the other side that is about four and a half pounds. So. And uh, let's see how many, uh, uh, 39. 39. So just like a work week. <laughs> <laughs> just, just take, take a, a vacation and then you zoom out the whole week and then you're, you're done. So that's, yeah. Um, Another one that's a short one is Binti by Nedi Okorafor. Um, and then also All Systems Read by Martha Wells, which I didn't listen to, but I read, um, and it's really interesting. It's from the point of view of a robot, and he's on a mission with a bunch of humans and is kind of fed up with them and just not really having it. And he has a bit of like an attitude. It's, it's really funny. That's great. So... Um, I also had a question about maybe whether we've kind of talked this, mm -hmm. does it make tackling enormous books easier? Do you think it does? Because I you can think, kind of parcel I, it out. Yeah, you can sort of parcel it out. You can also, you know, crank up the, you know, the, the speed of the, the recitation too. So I think that's a way to sort of, you know, move along some places. So I think, that, I think, yeah, I think you're absolutely right that, that having, if you see, you know, a book that's, you know, this thick, and then there's a whole series of books that this thick in that series, you're like, oh man, you know, we're not doing that. I'm not doing that. But I do, I do think that you're right. I think that's exactly a way that you can sort of get yourself going. And what, what's nice is too, if you start a book, an audio book, 
you're not nearly as invested. You haven't carried the thing around. I think if you if you if you check a book out that's this thick and weighs like three pounds, you feel invested. If, if I'm going to work at this, I am going to read this thing. Whereas if you you're not as invested, if you check a more ridiculous like you know five, ten, fifteen minutes, you, and then you realize oh it's been like an hour. I get oh I guess I am enjoying this. You know that that sort of thing. So yeah, it's a way yeah. to a way to get yourself in there. Um, so two I kind of talked about as being kind of an enormous. Um, books in themselves are both fantasy books, Wheel of Time by Robert Jordan, which I mentioned because it's going to be an Amazon series coming oh, up. So if right. you want to get ahead of that and learn the characters, um, it's a really enormous series, but doable on audio. And then Promise of Blood is one I did recently and by Robert McClellan and really enjoyed it. Um, there's a great magical system in it and just kind of the traditional, fan all the things you want from like a traditional fantasy. Um, so I really recommend that one. Cool. And we had mentioned thrillers, and so um, take it away. That's yeah, it. so I, for me, I think listening to them on audio makes them less scary. So okay. that's my opinion. What do you think? I, you know, it I think it, it probably depends on the book and narrator. Because I could see a scenario where the narrator, if it's a creepy voice, and it's like, you know, depending on the, the, the scenarios, I'm like, oh, it's like, so I, I, I think you have some specific uh, suggestions that you were referring yeah, to as yeah. well. Yeah, so, so. Um, my first one is I'll Be Gone in the Dark by Michelle McNamara, which um, there was also, uh, this was also on HBO as a documentary about her. Um, she had a true crime blog and it was about tracking the Golden State Killer who hadn't been found and terrifying. She goes through each kind of case and what happened to these women and Whew. But she, you know, her skills as an investigator and every, putting everything together was really compelling. And I really, really enjoyed it, but would much rather listen to it in daytime. <laughs> um, I just put The Shining by Stephen King because it's classic. And if you haven't done it on audio, is a great way to do it. And then another one I did recently was The Silent Patient um, by Alex Michalides. And this one, she's an artist. Her husband is a fashion photographer in London and she murdered him. And she's in a mental institution and she hasn't talked since she murdered him. So there's a psychologist who gets a job there and he starts working with her and trying to like pull out like what happened. Supposedly they were happy. How did this all happen? So he's trying to draw out like the mystery of what happened with her. So, cool. um, wow. Another good one. So more of a like a psychological thriller. Yeah, I keep going. So many books, so little time. <laughs> um, and then, like we had said, with um, big, huge books. Also, I think if it's a TV show that you enjoyed, I think it's a good way. You know, if you watch Outlander, you know, if you download this and you get a lot more detail. But if you miss a little bit while you're, right. you know, doing the dishes, right. it's not a big deal. So I would say I had a few um, Outlander. Discovery of Witches is another show that's out now and a really good audiobook. And then uh, Virgin River is a Netflix show and kind of like a rom com, soap opery kind of show that's really um, kind of cozy and fun. And that's by Robin Carr. And it was kind of interesting to um, compare those. So that's cool. And I, I think you bring up, a, you bring up a good point about the, uh, the, the Audiobooks, you can fit them in anywhere you, you want to. You have a lot of leeway as to anytime you have a free time, if you're cleaning, if you're washing dishes, if you're, you know, anything like that, you stick your headphones in or play them. Yeah, Definitely. exactly. Uh, one thing uh, we did want to talk about real quick, too, about uh, authors who do read their own books. If you have an author who you have seen on interviews or that you know who does readings, those are the kind of authors that you really want to get their books. Um, and I'm thinking specifically of people like Sarah Vowell, uh, David Sedaris, I mentioned Natalie Haynes last week. They have that distinctive voice that you're used to, and I don't think it would make sense to sort of hear it in somebody else's voice if they were reading it. So that, that's the kind of thing. One of the things I do want to uh, uh, bring up is uh, Damon Young, who won the Thurber Prize for American Humor for 2020, uh, is What Doesn't Kill You Makes You Blacker. He, is, he actually grew up in Pittsburgh, so if you have been to Pittsburgh, I realize we're from Cleveland, so we can uh, uh, so there's that. But he grew up in Pittsburgh. Uh, he mentions all kinds of places. He talk, talks about going to Kennywood in high school and how what big a deal it was. But he has a real distinctive voice. 
He's a great storyteller, and I highly recommend this, especially since it did win the Thurber Prize. Uh, and I think it's it's a great way to uh, get that whole idea of the, the author reading their own material as well. Uh, added a few more here. Um, Born a Crime by Trevor Noah, the host of The Daily Show. Beloved by Toni Morrison. And actually I have another one, Song of Solomon. Toni Morrison read a few of her audiobooks. Uh, Bag of Bones by Stephen King, which I didn't know he read any of his. Uh, Not My Father's Son by Alan Cumming, the actor. And then With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo. And that's a YA book. Yeah. And we do, there are people who will download and listen to audiobooks for the narrator. Oh, yeah. yeah. Not necessarily for the, the person book. who wrote the book. It's the, to hear that voice. And if you really like that delivery, that is a legitimate category of uh, audiobooks. And I have one of those, which is, <laughs> I'm proving the point right here, which is um, Jim Butcher and his Dresden File series, which he is a wizard detective in Chicago. And they're really fun. It's a it's a bizarre mix of genres. Um, but if you're familiar with Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the TV show, the actor that played Spike, um, James Marsters, is the narrator for these. And he does a, a fantastic job. He may be almost more well known for this at this point. Um, <laughs> but just I really, really enjoy it. And it's a huge series. I don't even know what book they're on now. But um, he does a great job narrating these. So and the first, I guess the first time I really remember about narrators was, and I don't know the person's name now, and I apologize for even bringing this up because of that, <laughs> but I remember the, the person who did the Harry Potter books was really well known for just the, the, the way that he characterized Jim Dale. All. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's right. That was a test. That uh, was just see? a test. See, I passed. <laughs> and in England, it was Stephen Fry. Oh, really? So, yeah. yeah well, there's there's a bit of that. trivia for you. <laughs> Definitely. No. Um, and then, oh, we got a comment. Anderson Cooper's book with his mother, Gloria Vanderbilt, is read by the two of them, and it's oh, excellent. Oh, there you go. That one. Exactly. There. That's great. Nice. Thanks. Um, and then here, we mentioned this before, oh, but yes, yes. stopping books, and it's definitely valid for audiobooks or regular books to just stop if you're not yes. enjoying it. Um, I enjoy Regency romances, and was telling Don, I downloaded three or four in a row, and it had a male narrator and he's doing these kind of lilty feminine voices and it was just terrible. And, and I, I found this hard to believe. I was like, oh, surely it's not nearly it's as bad really as Sarah's making up. I downloaded it. Oh, it was bad. It takes you out of it so bad. Oh my. So. Hey, hey, thank you for coming to visit me today. Perfect. That's exactly how I was. You're like, oh, this it's, isn't it's like not too much romantic. exaggeration. It's, yeah, it's bad. It, <laughs> so save yourselves and uh, do not uh, enjoy Regency romances in print. Maybe. And let the voices speak in your head. And I'm sure there, that was just a bad example. I'm sure there's. I'm sure there are. I'm sure. I'm sure. Okay, yeah, right. <laughs> um, and then um, one more the Assassin's Apprentice series by Robin Hobb, they changed narrators halfway through and he did different accents than the first guy. Oh. I was so mad. So there's my yeah. once once you once you rant. get accustomed to your ear, like, you're gonna you yeah. and then it's like it's like reading an entirely new new book or a new it, series. Just, a new like, narrator. Why couldn't you just pay that guy to come back? So <laughs> they really bummed me out for that one. But it, it is a fascinating medium. Um, is it a medium? It's a medium, not a genre. So, so audiobooks are a medium of expression, just like print. You have print, you have audiobook, you have you know, comics, you have you know, that sort of thing. So it's a medium of expression. I think that it definitely gives you a whole different view on the the, the books that you're reading. And we can say reading. Yeah. So I think that it's um, very worthwhile. If you haven't tried audiobooks, we highly recommend. There's uh, the audio, the um, uh, downloads for everybody that you can do. They're nice and easy to, to download. Uh, there's no commitment. You listen to five minutes and get yourself sucked into the story. And before you know it, you've listened to 39 hours of Outlander. <laughs> See? <laughs> All right. Um, and Jennifer says, I have Jenny Lawson's new book downloaded, read by her, and have a road trip coming up. Oh, excellent. They are, they're great for road trips, they're, especially if you have to go somewhere by yourself for, for whatever, for a meeting or something like that, that's, you know, in another city or something. Man, that makes the miles so fly much by. Yeah, so much much more enjoyable. Well, I think we're out of time. Okay. 
So thank you for joining us for <laughs> episode number two of Book Drops and uh, join us in two weeks for something completely different. <laughs> Thanks.